Blog Talk Radio. Those who dare to travel in the spaces between the lines. This is Shadow Travels with your hosts, Kevin Cook and Ray Sazone. Good evening, everybody, uh, from the very snowy Syracuse area. And we are having a little bit of a difficulty tonight with some connections. I'm not sure if it's because of a storm and the weather. Um, I think Ray just got on. Ray, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me all right? Yes, I can hear you much better now. Okay. All right. Yeah, Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and blame it on this, on on Stella, on the snowstorm. Yes, for sure. (laughs) I'm sure it seems uh, to be the popular thing right now. Absolutely. Wrecking havoc everywhere anyway. So you just got in from plowing, huh? I did, yeah. If I'm a little out of breath, that's why, running through the snow and shoveling for the dog and plowing out the uh, the driveway. And they're saying another, maybe another <laughs> another foot tonight, right, we're supposed to get? Yeah. Possibly. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, hey, we're used well, to it, right? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> maybe not, not so it's a much in March. Old, but, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we we have a very interesting show tonight, Um, and this is a a show where I think I have a lot of questions. Um, It's definitely a topic that we've never now approached before in any manner, and frankly, I've never, I guess I've never really thought about this topic, to be quite honest. Um, We have, joining us in just a couple minutes, Shane McClelland, who is the co-founder and team leader of Queer Ghost Hunters, um, a group of LGBTQ paranormal investigators who actually seek out um, LGBTQ paranormal entities, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, So I I have a lot of questions for Shane, and also one of his teammates, uh, Scott Pretty, will be joining us as well. At least that's the plan. Um, What were your thoughts on this, Ray, while we wait for Shane to call in? You know, when we kind of came across these guys and and ladies and... um, see what they do. I think it's a topic that a lot of us have never really thought about before in this in this sense. Yeah, and you know, I have to say, as a gay man, I'm kind of disappointed in myself that I didn't think of this sooner. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it's a fascinating topic. Um, I, I think it, it's, a, it's a really incredible, interesting group. Uh, I'm excited to hear more about them. I, I've watched their videos. I've watched their YouTube channels and uh, you know, I, I don't know of any group anywhere that is like theirs, and I don't know any group that's ever specifically sought out LGBT spirits. Uh, so I definitely mm-hmm. have my own questions. And it got me thinking about all of the different spirits we've come in contact with. And, you know, I, I can mention that a little bit later, but one in particular who you know um, tends mm-hmm. to have, have taken a liking, liking to me. So uh, I mean, I'm curious now. I, I did in uh, in their approach and how they got together and uh, how they're received as a group too. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, you know, and, and we have not been active in this for as long as a lot of people, you know, we're going on maybe, maybe two and a half years roughly now. Um, but I'm, I'm curious too, if this has ever been done before, you maybe even it's been done, uh, you know, maybe a long time ago that uh, we just weren't aware of. Um, so right. uh, again, a, a lot of, a lot of questions for Shane, and I see that he just called in. He's in the in the queue in the studio, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to him so we can get going on these questions here. Shane, are you there? Yeah, how are you guys? Good. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Yes, very good. Yeah, definitely. Are you getting some of it? Are you getting some of Stella in uh, in Ohio? Yeah, a are you, little are you getting bit. The snowstorm. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we don't have, like, I can still see some grass here, so it's not too bad. Oh, boy. (laughs) (laughs) We're not going to see grass for a couple weeks. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. (laughs) Yes, it is. (laughs) Um, Shane, I know that uh, Scott's going to be joining us probably in a little while, actually. Um, Yeah, in just a bit, I think he said he's going to be calling in. So uh, we have – I. I know Ray does as well, but I also have a lot of questions for you. I mean, I think admittedly this is a, a very, very unique thing in this field that you guys are doing right now. Um, so let's 
kick it all the way back to the beginning and how did you personally kind of get involved with um you know the the paranormal field yeah so um i've always been sensitive to um entities i guess and i didn't really know how to describe that when i was when i was younger but um you know eventually like i think i was i was probably 7 or 8 and i you know i told my parents that um our house was haunted and they of course didn't believe me um and but you know those experiences just continued to occur throughout my life whether it was living at home or you know living in my my first apartment that i had um and so it that led to just you know being interested in the paranormal um so it's kind of just always been something that i've followed along with and how did you come across um I guess other folks that that were interested in this. I mean, I'm sure you probably came across some before you found your group. Um, but how did you kind of get in touch with the other members of the group to to form the group? Yeah. Um, so I was actually working at the uh, the LGBT community center here in Columbus, um, and one of my coworkers uh, was invited to go on ghost hunts, and I was like enthralled by it because I had never actually been able to go on like a, a formal one. Um, so I was like, you know, like, can I myself involved myself? And, uh, but, you know, that worked out and we met this, this wonderful group of people who, um, kind of, you know, taught us everything, um, let us use all the tools that we had. And, you know, eventually that turned into like, a great hobby that I had. So, you know, then I, I had all my own tools and my, my coworker Lori, um, the other founder of the Spirit Ghost Hunters, um, her and I decided to start the uh, Stonewall Columbus Queer Ghost Hunters, not just the Queer Ghost Hunters, um, because, you know, when we were doing investigations, we uh, noticed that we were always assuming that ghosts were heterosexual. So if we thought we had a male entity, we would ask if they had a wife, or if we had a female entity, we'd ask if they had a husband. And, you know, we kind of thought, even though, like, you know, I'm gay, she was a lesbian, and there were two other lesbians in the group with us, you know, no one ever, no one ever goes down the, that, the, the path of asking um, if they're queer. So um, we started trying to do that, and um, people really thought it was interesting, so we kind of made our own group and found some other people that thought it would be a fun idea, and that's how the Queer Ghost Hunters got started. And I got to say that I think just before you you called in and joined us, um, Ray Ray and I were actually talking about that exact point. In that, you know, I it never it never occurred to me what you just you know what you just said is that I, I think we for almost two and a half years now we've always done the same thing when, when we're asking, um, and it just it makes perfect sense when somebody says it to you, but when you're there doing it, I, I don't know. I guess you just never think of it. I mean, Ray, we were just discussing that same thing, correct? Yeah, we were a very, very interesting timing. Um, I, I'm curious to know if um, – I, I have a little bit of an idea, but for anybody who might not have seen any of your shows yet, um, I'm curious to know, do you look out uh, – do you seek out potential um, – uh, what I want to say, LGBT areas um, for um, specific spirits or so I, I'm not sure I'm explaining that. I'm saying that no, quite correctly. Do, I mean, do, um, we go to places that we have LGBTQ entities. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes and no. So, um, we kind of like do our research and find some place that um, has queer history, because um, that's obviously going to get us uh, the best opportunity to hopefully make contact with mm -hmm. a queer entity. Mm -hmm. And um, so, like, we, we do that, which is, you know, the season one was a, a, a Collingwood, which uh, used to be a, um, a, a convent. And we mm -hmm. thought that, you know, there was a, a really good chance that probably <laughs> some lesbian nun there. Um, but right. we didn't really have a, a significant amount of history for that specific location that led us to believe that there would be. But 
you know, and then, you know, season two is going to be at, at Mansfield, and there is a lot of queer history at Mansfield. So we're, you know, it's, it's we're definitely going to have, like, targeted areas there, hopefully find spirits who identified as gay. Okay, uh, great. I see that. Yeah, uh, very cool. I see that. I see Scott just called in or called in just a, a minute or two ago, so I want to make sure we get him on. So I'm going to go ahead and, and click him over. Um, and we also have somebody that's called in with a question. So let me get Scott on first here. Scott, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you for joining us tonight. Oh, thank you for Yes. Hello, me. Scott. Hi. Scott, I'm going to, and Shane, I'm going to go over and, um, oh, I guess our, our caller, we Decided not to ask, so they dropped the call. Sorry, right, so we'll go <laughs> ahead. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you away. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's um, fault. <laughs> now, Scott, what's your role in the group? Do you have a, a specific role? Um, I guess I'm kind of the, the sensor uh, or a medium, so to speak. I can kind of fill uh, ghosts or spirits, I think, as long as they want to let me fill them and let me know that they're there. So I, I kind of can be alerted that um, there might be potential activity in a room or none, for that matter. Okay. Um, and this is for a question for either Shane or Scott, and, and I'm asking not really just as an interview question, but sincerely out of curiosity. When you come across the, the spirit, whether you're in an area that you would consider to be um, filled with LGBTQ spirits or or straight spirits, without the use of the medium, without Scott's input, how would you tell? How can you tell? Um, yeah, so that's it's obviously like it's different, right? And uh, we go through the, this, this whole process um, at the start of every investigation, where we kind of you know circle the group together. Everyone introduces themselves to any you know, thing that might be there. And we go through and we say, um, you know, for example, I would, you know, I would say I'm gay. I'm a man who, uh, you know, is romantically, you know, attracted to uh, and loves other men. Um, just to kind of, you know, like lay the groundwork for the language, because that's those aren't words that always existed over the course of time. And then after that, you know, we just ask, uh, just kind of like to the void if there is anything or anyone, um, you know, that would like to talk to us that might be able to relate to that. And then, you know, we start, you know, we, sometimes we start with thousand rods, we might do some EVP stuff, we might do a spirit box, but eventually uh, we're able to, I mean, you know, not always, obviously, but uh, more often than not, we're actually able to make contact with an entity that identifies some place on the spectrum. And, we, you know, we can get you know, either an affirmative answer with that or answers that, you know, kind of convey that, that same message. Okay. Now, I would assume that um, because I, I know that you bring in uh, a lot of history as well to your investigations, um, that probably, and, and I'm a history teacher myself, so... I would imagine that if you're looking back in, in time, history-wise, at least in the U.S., a lot of these places that where you're going to find LGBTQ folks, unfortunately, are, are probably going to be some kind of an institution because, historically speaking, that's where they were placed, correct? Correct, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, the, the LGBTQ people were, you know, more heavily incarcerated and institutionalized, um, than the, the general population. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that, you know, for a long time, and really up until very recently, it was just illegal to, to be queer. And uh, mm -hmm. they used that as either you know, a mental condition or a reason to, um, you know, arrest, uh, arrest you for, you know, either doing something that was illegal or being someplace that was illegal or, you know, disrupting the peace or something. Mm -hmm. Ray, I'll, I'll toss it over to you for a quick second. I'm just jotting down a few notes here. Sure. Um, so I'm curious, out of the different places you've investigated, if there's any one place that really sticks out um, that, that you would really um, 
want to go back to or you know maybe highlight if you haven't already on one of your on one of your shows. Uh, for me, I can't speak for Shane, but for me, I would love to go back to Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum in West Virginia. Hmm. Was no, there, no, was that was there anything? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go Ken. ahead, Scott. Why don't you? T I was just going to have Scott tell us about their experiences there because I've heard that place is mm -hmm. fascinating. Uh, it was. It was very fascinating. Um, it seemed very active. And uh, we did come across, uh, I don't recall her name, if we even figured out her name, but now that I'm thinking about it, we did come across um, a lesbian patient that was there. Um, so just the overall experience, like I said, very, very active. The group that hosted us, I, I don't recall the group's name, but uh, the group that hosted us was very, very gracious. They were great to work, work with and be around. Uh, it was just a really good experience overall. That's great. Um, our caller is back with a question, so I'm going to go over and click over it before the call gets dropped again. So, Hi, you're on with us. Hello. Hello, who's this? This is Tim with Ann. Oh, Tim, you called in last week, right? Yes, I did. Do you have a question Welcome for back. Shane or for Scott? Um. I actually, I heard about this guy from how he got into the paranormal. Mm hmm And I wanted you were to wondering. Because I was wondering, do you believe in these lesbians and gay spirits? Do they actually exist? Um, well, I can tell you my opinion is if you believe that spirits are ghosts for people before, then you almost have to accept that there are gay and lesbian ghosts and spirits because I believe that, you know, the ghosts that we're talking to, they were people or are people in some fashion. So if whatever you believe in humanity, you kind of have to believe that that carries over to the paranormal of the spirit world. Okay. And I wanted to share, I'm trying to be an investigator, and I created my own team, too. All right. What's the name of the team, Timothy? And I wanted to share, it's not all set up yet, but it's called Ghost Hunting Spiritual Original Team. All right. Nice. Well, good luck. Thank you for calling in, and I'm sure we will uh, we'll be hearing from you again soon, right? Yes, you will. Great. All right, Thank thanks, you, Tim. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, guys, I think one of the uh, things I wrote down looking or uh, watching your show, um, well, I forget which one of you said it, but you said, and you said it tonight, we always assume ghosts are heterosexual. And as far as my approach as a gay man, I can't believe I – I don't think I ever assumed that. I don't think I assumed anything, um, I, but I've never assumed or, or tried to identify um, an LGBT spirit. Um, and I'm also the medium of our group, Syracuse Paranormal. And now I'm really kind of thinking back some of our cases, and I'm, it's, I'm really wondering about some of the some of the spirits we've come across. And one in particular, uh, we have a mansion that we go to regularly. And there's a male spirit that communicates regularly and um, really reaches out to me. And if I'm not there, Kevin will often get uh, him mentioning my name through a spirit box or uh, through responses of lighting. So I'm I'm very very intrigued and, and interested in following some of what what your approach is out in the field. Yeah, I mean it's it's. You know, it, it didn't happen, you know, like right away for us either. It was after, you know, several different investigations where it just kind of, you know, it was like 4 o'clock in the morning and we're driving back to Columbus. And then and it was like, you know, why why haven't we ever, you know, asked anyone if, you know, they were queer in, you know, in their, in their physical life? And, mm -hmm. you know, it just, and like you said earlier, it just seems so obvious after you say it, but... Up until that point, it, I don't think anyone had really, or at least none of us had ever really thought about it. 
Right. So I think we're all guilty of that. I don't think any of us have. I mean, I've been watching paranormal shows since I was a kid. Um, I knew I was gay in my teens, and I never thought to ask that question. And and I'll be honest, I don't think that with all the shows that, that I've seen, I can't remember once that that it coming up at all on any of the shows. Um, that That's why it kind of struck me as just, wow, I, I couldn't believe it, <laughs> that, that we had never thought about that. <laughs> Um, it's just it's just such an obvious thing I think that 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 we should have thought about it. Um, well, now we know. Guys and now we will. Uh, yes, we do. <laughs> and just like you, right now, I'm thinking back to all the places that we've been. <laughs> I'm going back through yeah. and all the all the and all the entities we've come into contact with. Um, mm-hmm. Either Shane, a question for either Shane or Scott, but I'm curious. You know, have you guys met any resistance? Um, in out in the field, you know, specifically because I know, I don't know if I'm going to put this the right way, so I'll do my best. Um, you know, there's you're not. Huh, how should I put this? Help me out, right? Ray is a Ray is a Ray is a. I'm just trying to think of a right way to put it without being offensive. Ray is a is a gay man. Is a gay. Yeah. Well, God, Ray is a gay man on on our team. You guys kind of put that out there right in the title of your group. So obviously if you call up an institution or you call up an investigation site, you know, you're going to use your team name. Have you met any resistance because of that, because of of having that out there? I mean, we haven't met any resistance I can think of, right, you know, with with you being gay in that sense, Um, at least nothing up front. But have you guys met any resistance just because of having that out there in the name? So uh, when we originally created the group, weirdly, it didn't even cross our mind that that would be an issue. Um, It wasn't until, you know, later when we were contacting some of these smaller locations, you know, and just areas that would typically, you would guess would be more, you know, homophobic or unfriendly. um, Sure, sure. That we thought maybe it would eventually become an issue. And, you know, it actually hasn't been an issue at all, ever, not even once. Um, and That's in great. fact, it's been a way to, um, people are very interested in it, one, but two, you know, we'll, we'll go to a location and, you know, people who work there are like, you know, like, hey, I'm gay too, and it's so cool right. that you guys are here. Or, um, you know, the, the there was one gentleman who, you know, it, it was his nephew, um, he, you know, everyone in the family thought that his nephew was trans, and he was like, you know, do you have someone that I could talk to, you know, about this and try to get them, like, resources? Mm-hmm. So we were able to get them connected with some community centers, and it's just, like, it's actually just been a really... It, That's it's, great. It's, been, it's gone shockingly well. <laughs> so it's oh, actually that's served that's almost... Idea. It served a, a dual purpose or even more than that, really. I mean, which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, now, when you guys um, do you do private investigations as well of residences, or are you just doing public investigations? Our main focus is um, like uh, we don't really do residential um, investigations. We've done some, but um, it just isn't something that the group itself has typically focused on. Okay. Um, and when you go out, I, I've watched I watched your video of the with the nuns this afternoon. Um, you know what equipment do you use? What kinds of equipment do you bring with you? Um, yeah, it, it, definitely have, gassing rods. <laughs> yeah, <Okay>. uh, <laughs> that's our superpower. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I mean we. We obviously use the like the dolphins are a big feature in season one, but I mean we have you know recorders, we have the cameras, we have the boxes, EMF detectors. Um, you know we're working on getting um, a chill box. Um, mm-hmm. just, I mean we try to to kind of use as many different tools as possible, um, mm-hmm. mostly because it's I think it's more compelling, and I think most people would agree. Um, but it's more compelling when you can get evidence on multiple different devices, you know, either at the same time or kind of have some, 
you know, control interaction where it's like, can you, you know, light up the the rim pod, you know, anytime you're going to, you know, speak into the recorder or something, and you manage to get mm-hmm. it to light up and catch something on the recorder. Um, so, yeah. We try to cover it. Nice. Excellent. Now, uh, every group, I think, has a, a skeptic on it, or at least somebody who's more skeptical than, than everybody else. So who is that on your group? <laughs> um, I mean, Scott can add to this, but honestly, I, I might be the biggest skeptic, but I think overall the group itself is fairly skeptical. Um, we like we honestly do try to do a, a really good job of, you know, uh, you know, just like filtering out anything that could be incorrect, or if it could be something, or you know, if you make a sound and we're to you know do like an EVP session. Um, and you know everyone knows that you have to you have to call it out. You know, like that's my stomach. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> right, otherwise, it's, there's mysterious growls. Um, but I mean, Scott, do you have an opinion on that? No, I agree. I think we're all fairly skeptical. I would say who is the most skeptic? I would have to say is probably Liam for some reason. Um, which, and I mean that in a good way. But, yeah, and, but I think we're all pretty skeptical. And like Shane mm-hmm. said, we, we try to make sure that we cross everything off the list that it could possibly be. And I think we look at each other to do that. Um, and I think you have to be skeptical uh, a little bit to be a ghost hunting. Sure. Yeah, I agree. I have definitely have seen groups out there, you know, and we see them on television once in a while where every single thing is a, is a piece of evidence. And I think people are surprised because we've, offer uh we offer public investigations too where we have different groups come in and um i think people are surprised when we try to debunk and we often do debunk things uh, i think that's very necessary yeah no I, I agree i actually appreciate the skeptics uh to a degree because they help me think about it and like, like you said debunk and i've certainly been on um public hunts like you said where people i think they go in so excited and wanting to see something that every little shadow, every little noise they see or hear, it's it's a ghost because mm-hmm. they set themselves up to do that. And yeah, and sometimes you pointed out they actually get really disappointed. <laughs> now, do you guys have you hosted any public investigations yourself? Uh, uh, we've not done... yet, but we've actually been talking about that. So we haven't done it as the the clear ghost hunters that are a part of the series, but um, we did it when it was you know the before like we started like kind of in the series we we did a um, a couple public investigations at uh, the Old Licking County Jail. Yeah, I've seen that I've seen that show up a lot actually on my Instagram. Where where is that located? In York, Ohio. Uh, yeah, they, they, the middle of nowhere, Ohio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a really great place. I think a lot of the, you know, like the the the, the groups that are on TV, like uh, Ghost Adventures and Ghost Hunters. I believe both of those groups have actually shot there. So um, mm-hmm. it's a pretty cool place. And I I think I speak for Scott and I both that it's probably one of our favorite places to go. Yeah, definitely mine. That was uh, my first ghost investigation ever, and it was with the Queer Ghost Hunter. So that's definitely always going to have a special place in my heart. Mm-hmm. So let me ask, Ready what, um, yeah, what places that is it LGBTQ related or or not? Uh, what place would you love, like your dream spot to investigate that you haven't yet? What would that be for you, Scott and Shane? Oh, for me, man, that's hard. There's so many I see that I would love to go to. I would love to, <laughs> like, go to, I think it's the Myrtles, is what it's called, down in Louisiana. The uh, oh, yeah. Ray, right. we have friends for a road trip now. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're we're, yeah, we're planning it. We don't have a date yet, but yeah. <laughs> that's on our list. So we had the um, yeah, we had I'm, the privilege back in back in October of actually interviewing the manager of the Myrtles on our show, and it was um, 
uh, talk about an hour that flew by. Holy cow, she's got some great stories. So that was a lot oh, of fun. Oh, I bet. Just in the shows I've seen with that are, are incredible. And, Scott, what about you? Do you have a... That Mine was the Myrtles. Yeah. That might be the top one on my list. Oh, yours was Myrtles, too? Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I read, you know, in your bio, Shane, you, and you talked a little bit about it when we opened up the show, that you had a paranormal experience at home when you were growing up, and you still think that you have one at your house now. Yeah. Um, I actually uh, haven't been able to decide if I have, you know, kind of some kind of entity that likes to follow me around or if I just have, you know, really bad luck in picking places to live. But... Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, I, my, I grew up on a, you know, an old farmhouse and, you know, the, the entity that was there wasn't anything, you know, I've never lived with anything that was malicious, but that one was very kind of like residual, um, Mm -hmm. nothing really exciting ever. You would just kind of like see it and it would, what it liked to do was just pace up and down the hallway. Um, but you know, that, that wasn't that exciting. And then when I was in law school, that's when I really started thinking that, um, you know, like there might be something with me just because after I left that apartment, after living there for three years, um, you know, my, my next apartment, there was, there was something there. And then, and the house I live in now, um, there's you know, people, you know, friends are, and they're like, you know, the, the bedroom at the end of your hall, that's really creepy. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's where the ghost is. You know, it's just like that's that's where he hangs out. We've agreed that he can have that space, and we're good. <laughs> now, I'm, in your in your investigations to date, what's the I guess most amazing thing that you guys have actually experienced or come across? And I know that's at least for us anyway. That's usually our, our first question we hear from the public. <laughs> um, so, what what have you guys seen? What have you guys heard? What have you experienced? And so far, that's really amazed you. Oh wow, um, that's that's really I hard. Would say, <laughs> I, I would say for me, probably one of the, the, the most extraordinary things I've come across um, when we were at Collingwood, and none of this made um, any of the episodes. That when we were at Collingwood, when we first got there, I kept smelling roses to the point that I thought someone had on perfume. So I kept leaning into um, Victoria, who's beside me, like trying to smell if she had on some kind of perfume or something, and she didn't. At least not that I could tell. Um, I was looking around for vents, stuff like that, just to see why am I smelling like roses. And not perfumey, but like real, real roses. So eventually I finally spoke up and said, is anybody else smelling roses? And they didn't until they came closer to me, and then I think people were starting to smell it. So I still kind of wrote it off. We left the room. Um, as we would leave one room and go into another and would be in there for a minute or two, I would start smelling roses again. So when we were in the basement, just through um, the best that we could tell, we started asking questions and uh, the nun, Madeline, that we made contact with, we figured out that she used to wear rose water. Oh, wow. wow. Very cool. And so just just to have that very powerful, like, I could smell this. Nobody had on perfume. I, I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And then the entity was wearing rose water. That was very extraordinary to me. That's we've uh, we've had that experience I think with those smells quite a bit, especially um, you, Ray, and Lisa, our other medium that mm-hmm. sometimes comes with us at the mansion. Um, you guys have, have often smelled different, whether it be lilac or um, you even smelled that hospital type smell one time when we were there. Mm-hmm. Now. Um, I was going to ask Scott what I had asked Shane earlier, and that, Scott, how did you come to um, be part of the group? How did you kind of join up with them? Um, I kind of stumbled into it, to be honest. Um, as Shane mentioned, our local LGBTQ center started a group. Um, it showed up in my Facebook feed. I saw Stonewall, Queer, Queer, Stonewall Columbus Queer Ghost Hunters. Um, I went to the initial meeting. Um, I thought, hey, this would be a great way. You know, I'm interested in ghost hunting, never done it. Um, I'll be with my queer peers, so how, how cool would that be? So I went. Um, 
the first, um, it wasn't an investigation, but the first outing they had was actually on a train in Akron, Ohio, where they rented. So I went and met a couple people. Um, then they did the Licking County Jail, which was the first one that I really went to, mm -hmm. and just kind of fell into it from there. I had no idea. Stu, the director, was actually there. I didn't even know who he was. Um, didn't know they were thinking about a series. I, I no idea. I just kind of stumbled into it. And the next thing I know, I'm in this series. <laughs> now, if we've never um, talked to a guest about this before, but since you guys are, are have the YouTube series out there, um, how difficult is that to produce? How how time consuming? How much involvement is is it? You know, the editing process and all that, because it's actually something we're thinking about getting involved in. So, what was that procedure like getting that whole thing going, get, getting the episodes up and running? Yeah. Um, so I I think fortunately Scott and I don't have to be editing. Um, <laughs> that all do. I was, I was thinking that I was going to say it. <laughs> 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 so do handle that himself and um you know it's it's time consuming to i mean it's one of the, like think about you know, you're on investigation and it's you know it's eight hours ten hours that you're there and he films all of that and then on top of that we have anything that we record whether it's um on film or a recording device and all that has mm -hmm. to be you know, like sifted through, and then, you know, if, if we were just posting like, you know, this was us at, you know, whatever location, that's probably easier than trying to turn it into episodes where he has to kind of like, all right, these five minutes go together, but there's also this evidence over here that is on the same place. We need to like figure out how we can connect all of that, to kind of like tell a story that is, you know, authentic and accurate to what mm -hmm. happened that night. Um, so it, it takes him a lot of time, honestly, and it's it's a lot of work to to put together the series. We have it. Yeah, and I, I really I recommend it. anybody listening who hasn't uh, who hasn't watched. I really recommend it. You know, I, I didn't know when I before I first watched it. Um, I, I wasn't sure what to expect, but I, I was very pleasantly uh, surprised with how professional it was. So, you know. Everybody you have working yeah. on it, you know, they're doing a great job. It's definitely, definitely appealing and, you know, very professional. Well, thank you. Yeah, and I mean, that's, you know, I mean, for, yeah, thank you. But that's, you know, the reason we wanted to do the Kickstarter when we first started the project um, was so that we could have the resources to, you know, you know, like hire a, you know, a voiceover artist to kind of like give it a, a, a professional a, a feeling. And then, you know, mm -hmm. any of the, like, extra tools that, you know, Stu needs to make sure that it's done in a, a professional manner is, um, you know, all of that was, like, able to be supported through that. And we continue to try to, to raise money to you know, either uh, continue producing the series or to help uh, finance any, um, you know, extra special uh, trips that we might take um, mm -hmm. to make a, you know, a season or whatever through Patreon. Yeah, I'm sure you guys can, can confirm to go into some of these places is really expensive. Yes, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's definitely something that I'm not sure we were aware of or prepared for um, when we started this. And I think, unfortunately, that because, you know, probably 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, almost all these places would have been free. And ever since, right. you know, the TV shows came on, well, everybody in their – best friend figure they can make money off of their place so it's um yeah. you know we're usually pretty we're pretty selective with where we go if we're going to pay money i'd rather be donating money to an historical site or someplace like that um yeah you know, definitely we've had the you know we've had the very good fortune to connect with some some folks um that have just become friends that have allowed us to go into places for free which is awesome um you know, but we've paid. We've definitely paid <laughs> to get into some places. <laughs> um, you know, and that's uh, that, that's yeah, I guess that's all part really of the. Expensive. Yes, and and that's not even and, counting travel and, and all the everything else. Exactly, and then some of them have like extra fees for filming and so forth. So. Mm -hmm. 
that's very true. Um, what would be, you know, what would you guys consider to be your biggest, I, I guess, pet peeve in the field right now, as far as you're concerned? What thing kind of kind of bugs you guys the most that you see out there, or you see on TV? I my biggest pet peeve is um, the, and it's I it think it's mostly. Uh, on TV, and that kind of has like filtered out into the broader paranormal community. But the um, provoking entities to try to get a response yes. or some kind of evidence. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I just it's I our group at least tries to you know always keep in mind that you know like we kind of operate under the assumption that these were people, um, mm-hmm. and if you want them to interact with you, and if you want to have a positive experience, and you know catch something that's actually, you know, remarkable, then you should treat them like a person and be respectful and nice and try to, you know, engage them in a more of a rather than a threatening um, course of manner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I think that that may be one of our top three, if not, you know, top, top one that, that really bothers us as well. Um, and sadly, that's what plays up on TV. And um, that's right, what yeah. people like to see, and that's unfortunate. Um, you know, there's a I, I joke around with the, with our team a lot about this, um, but I, I often make comments about a particular show that's on uh, with a, a leader that always finds a demon of the week, and um, like, right. as I call it, <laughs> and uh, you know, and back in the back around Christmas time, I'd made a comment on our Facebook page about. Um, some what I thought were un- irresponsible and unprofessional things he was doing on a show, and I was raked across the coals on our Facebook page <laughs> just for making that comment. People came out of the woodwork that I had never even heard of to defend him, and it just blew my mind. Wow! Um, you know, it's it just was it was unbelievable, and you know, it was it was a very professional post. I just kind of said, "Hey, I don't think he should be doing this. What he's doing." And um, but people, you know, people like what's on TV, and they they like that excitement. I mean, we tell all of our public groups that when we do hunts, and you know, Ray can verify this as well. That ninety percent of the time, it's really pretty boring what we do. Um, mm-hmm. You know, five yeah. percent yeah. of the time it's someone <laughs> interesting, and the other five percent it's very interesting. So, but ninety percent of the time it's it's pretty boring. And people, I don't. I think you had mentioned this earlier, Shane, that that people don't really understand that when they go into public hunts. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and you're right. 90% of the time, it's a bunch of people sitting around in the dark waiting on something to happen. Um, right. And you kind of, you know, there's not, there's not really a better way to describe it. <laughs> but when you watch it on TV, it looks, you know, an hour of running around screaming and it's a lot more exciting. Yes, exactly. Yep. Um, now, uh, I'm trying to think. I think uh, Ray, I'll toss it over to you for a second. I'm consulting my notes here. I was looking to sure. have something else, but go ahead. I want to get my thoughts together first on it. So I'm curious to know, uh, just your opinion. Uh, I, I have this theory going on that, um, you know, we as part of the LGBT community, um, very often, almost everybody, of course, is an exception to the rule, but almost everybody that I know um, that's a medium is, and male is generally falls into that um, GBTQ plus 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 whatever category you know one of the acronyms or is a is a female. So I'm curious to know your thoughts if you, if you ever ever had any discussion about being LGBTQ has any type of um, if there's any type of correlation to being a little more sensitive. Um, I, I, I have my theory. Um, curious what what you guys think if you've ever had any of those discussions or. Uh, uh, I don't. I can't speak for Shane, um, but I haven't. Yeah, have not. I don't know that we we haven't really discussed that, but I, I agree with you that it's something that I, I've definitely noticed. And mm-hmm. you know, it could just be that, you know, when you're when you're younger and you're kind of like <laughs> figuring out that you're different. Um, you know, maybe that just, you know, allows you to just be more open to any other differences 
have or feel or notice. Um, you know, it, it's just, just, I don't know. I guess I just think being, you know, some some place on the queer spectrum, you know, maybe it just gives you a different outlook on um, what's around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. That's very much along the line of, of part of my my thinking process around this. And um, my background is in education as well as Kevin's. So I'm constantly thinking, like, how can we get some research behind this? And um, you know, I was very interested to hear that, that you guys both have your own abilities, your own experiences, and, you know, they're very similar to mine and uh, many others that I've heard about. And it's very rare that I've found straight men in particular who also claim to be sensitive or psychic or medium or what have you. Yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> And you know, but and I, and I think there's just really a lot that goes into um, the like kind of even to admit that you know like maybe you have some kind of psychic ability or sensitivity that gives you mm -hmm. you know the ability to notice other things that you know society as a whole doesn't necessarily give um, straight men the opportunity to mm -hmm. you know admit that and then it's never explored and um, at least for me what I've noticed is. You know, like, I've always kind of like had ability and noticed it, but the more I try to on it and actually use it, the the easier it's become and the more like you know readily available it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm either, looking over okay. my notes. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Just looking over my notes here, and I, I was looking uh, one of the. It was one of the nun episodes. Um, I had mentioned particular friends, uh, specifically as far as what uh, they may have called their their significant other, their partner. Um, are you getting into the the history textbooks to look at that? I know. So again, as an educator, I'm disappointed with our lack of queer history that's been taught, and it's something I really want to push. Um, you know, for in inclusion in the curriculum. But I'm curious where you go to, to get that information. Is it is it um, you know just picking up the history books? Is it more related to the uh, the location you're you're investigating? Yeah, so kind of all of the above. Um, mm -hmm. It's insanely frustrating to research queer history, um, mm -hmm. and a lot of that is because it, it wasn't recorded. Um, what was recorded was more anecdotal. Um, or it, it was recorded in you know, a newspaper, but you have to read between the lines to figure out that, you know, these, these two men or these two women, they weren't, you know, roommates or best friends. Mm -hmm. They were lovers, and that's what caused the issue that they're writing about in the newspaper. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's really hard. And then on top of that, you know, because it was, you know, illegal and, and you know, it wasn't socially acceptable, um, the, the queer community used coded language or, you know, like signs and symbolism to communicate mm -hmm. to find other queer people. And some of that is, in, you know, like in our experience or research, some of that is kind of like location specific to, you know, whatever queer community developed in that area. Um, and then other parts of it are, you know, it was more widely shared. But, you know, it was, there it was difficult to share any like, you know, coded language with someone on the other side of the world from you. So it's not something that's like um, easily transferable. There's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of re like research that we have to do. You know, some of it is just, you know, reading the, the general, generally accepted queer history in the, in the books that are available and, and looking for location specific, um, a lot of it's, you know, newspaper articles and stuff and you know, wills mm -hmm. or deeds, um, anything that you can find that kind of helps paint a picture of what was going on there. Right. All right. Now, now Scott, as the, as the medium, have you guys ever come across an entity that needs to be crossed over but is afraid to go because they're afraid to be judged because of who they were? Uh, not yet actually, or at least not that I've been able to tell. That's, um, um, that's actually really you know, just, I, yeah. 
It's another okay. piece of this. Like Ray was saying, I guess I'm kind of I'm kind of constantly thinking now about this and how it's played into could play into um, events that that we've been part of and we've had to not myself but our mediums in past mediums have had to cross those over that won't go don't want to go for one or more reasons you know we had an instance where a person died of a drug overdose and they were afraid to cross over because they didn't want their parents to be mad at them and and i would imagine that um you may come across uh, an individual that is afraid to cross over because they're afraid to be judged for who they were so that's um hmm. and that that'd be uh, an no, interesting thing to find out yeah you've got to give me something yeah. to think about um because I'm still kind of learning about myself, to be honest. Um, right. And now I'm starting to wonder, I, I feel like I get followed a lot, um, especially when I've gone to places like the prisons and the jails. I almost always have somebody follow me home at some point, and now, I'm still, now you're making me wonder, is that what they're wanting from me? Hmm. Yeah, I think, go ahead. I've never really thought that. about you guys have, uh, it just got me thinking. So I always have, um, and with our whole group too, uh, we have our own our own rituals, our own prayers that, that we say before and after uh, arriving to a, a location and then when we leave just so we nothing does follow us. Do you have any of those type of rituals that you, you engage in? Yes, we definitely do. Um, they don't always take for me or sometimes like I right. have forgotten or um, like the, the Ohio State Reformatory, the Mansfield Prison, they actually do these like, little day tours, not necessarily just ghost hunts. And I went up for a day tour a couple of times and I, so I wasn't in like ghost investigation mode and I just mm-hmm. didn't think to do that on the way home and sure enough, I got followed home. Um, so yes, I, I know we do, at least I do, I, I don't know about the rest of the group, but uh, definitely, I have a little chance. Um, I try to protect mm-hmm. myself. I was listening to your podcast with, um, was it Jack Kenna? I think you guys were talking about yep. how you envisioned the white light around you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yep. so I do something very similar. Now, um, speaking of, of Jack and a number of other people, too, and I'll kind of put this out there on air for you guys, but we can talk about it off air uh, via email or Facebook if you want. We are actually doing... Um, uh, hosting a very big Paracon in August um, in Syracuse. So if you're interested in coming up to that, we still have spots left, and it would be great to have you guys if you want to make a little road trip um, and come up for a day or or overnight and set up there. Uh, We have a lot of great speakers, and it would be a very interesting – we'd be very interested to have you guys there and set up a table. So um, I just wanted to put that out there. We can certainly talk about that more off air if it's something you're interested in. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, one kind of uh, uh, weird question, I guess, for Shane. Um, I know you're an attorney. Have you had, and you are the only, as far as I know, you're the only attorney ghost hunter we've talked to. Um, <laughs> and has that ever, has that ever come into play in any way with the group? As far as, because we know there are, there can be a lot of legal issues involved with this. Um, have, have you come across anything? I mean, that's conflicted with you being an attorney and what you guys are doing. Oh no, um, not yet. Anyway. Um, okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, because I, very similar you know, to yeah, just very similar to Ray and I. You're you're kind of out there publicly for your job, as Ray and I are with educators. So people are going to see you. People are going to know who you are. So are you worried that that comes into any kind of conflict? So that, I mean, I haven't had that happen yet. Um, And in fact, it's kind of, you know, maybe it will someday. I don't know. It's just one of those, you know, I was already doing it. It was kind of nice to be able to talk about it and kind of stop caring what people thought about it. So, um, you know, if someone, I guess, does eventually have a problem, it's kind of like, you know, whatever. I think it's fun. Um, But what I've found is that, Usually people hear about it, and then they want to talk about it. They they want mm-hmm. to tell you yes. their stories. Very experienced. Yes, exactly. Yep. <laughs> and I, that's one of so, my like, so favorite true. parts of doing it because everyone has these stories, and no one talks about them because everyone like people are going to think I'm nuts. And then you finally right. like, you see someone you know, and you're like, well, this guy is obviously nuts. Put it on YouTube, and you see you feel comfortable <laughs> talking to him. <laughs> it's kind of like that. a whole, a whole other. 
coming out process. You know, you come out to somebody and they they have to tell you about their niece or nephew or friend or whoever, and then you <laughs> come out as a paranormal investigator and then they have to tell you, oh my, I yeah. growing up. And... <laughs> That's actually how I usually describe it. Is it's like you you have to come out as gay. And then later, mm-hmm. when you decided that you were a paranormal investigator, <laughs> you have to yeah. tell people that, too. <laughs> That's right. Uh, once again, something I never thought of, but I can't tell you how many times <laughs> I've, I've had to say that to people. <laughs> that's, I've never put it into that, that context, but that's for sure exactly how it happens every time. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, Ray, I don't know if you had any last-minute questions for these guys, because we're almost at the end of our hour already. So. Oh, boy. Wow. Goodbye. Yeah, I know. Um, sorry, just just going through my notes here. I I don't think I, I do at the moment. Um, okay. No. We covered well, a lot I, I here, and I, I know anything I'd want to get into did. would take longer than the last couple minutes we have. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Um, well, we'd love to have your, you back on sometime if you guys are interested in coming back on the show. Um, I'd love to, for sure. Yeah, and we can, um, like I said, we can talk offline or off off air if you're interested in coming up for a visit in August to the to the Paracon. And um, I, you know, yeah, and if I'm there gonna, are any events gonna, in Ohio, you know, we we can yeah. head that way. We, we plan trips, and I guess Kevin, maybe you could be an honorary gay, you know. Well, you know, for, uh, for an event, do I get do I get, <laughs> do I get a membership card? I, I don't know how strict they are, but uh, you know, <laughs> yes. we'll give you a toaster. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. Thank you. That's... <laughs> yeah, I do want to thank you guys though for um, kind of bringing a, a whole different focus and a whole different perspective to this because yeah, it really is definitely. something actually Ray and I have been talking about. You know, even before we knew you guys existed, talking about this whole concept for a long time and if it was even out there. And then we came across your team. I said, oh, my gosh, somebody is is doing something like this. So, you know, thank you for that. And it's a very, very cool concept. And it's a very, it's just a very, very neat perspective that I think needs to be out there. Well, thank you. Thank you for acknowledging it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we will be in touch with you guys. Off, off air about some things and uh, again thank you very much for coming on tonight if we can right. um, if, if we can give you guys an opportunity if you want to share anything um, oh yes any events coming up or if you want to you know yep. plug your your YouTube show um, you know go for it now, now's your time yep, sorry that uh, yeah, you can um, check out uh, season one of Queer Ghost Hunters on YouTube at Queer Ghost Hunters um is, you know, it's the channel name. And then you can also um, check out our website at queerhunters.com and you can find us on Patreon if you decide you want to support us and continue um, helping us produce the episodes. Um, and you can also buy uh, like T-shirts and stuff too, which is pretty cool, at queerghosthunters.store. Oh, I didn't see T-shirts. I'll be looking at those. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, great. We got to we got to hit the road for tonight. But um, thank you again, guys, and we'll be talking to you soon. Yeah, right, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good, good night. night. Oh, that was um, uh, very thought provoking. I, I guess I could say, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm thinking about different cases and locations, and there's the upstairs lounge um, arson that happened. Uh, back in the 70s, which was a, an old gay bar um, mm-hmm. where dozens of people were killed. And I'm just trying to think of all these locations now myself that right. <laughs> I'd want to investigate. Definitely, definitely great uh, group sure. of, of investigators. And, Invest- uh, really yeah, got absolutely. Thinking. It was a good one, good show tonight. So we will be back next week, and we will have on Steve Coles, the Squatch Detective, for our first Bigfoot show we've done in a long time. So with that, we'll say goodbye from Snowy Syracuse. I'll be talking to you, Ray. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Progressive brings you Flowetry with Flo. When Flo flows, she flows in the know. Mind ruminates the rates. Shown them all, I heed the call. Seeing the rest, I choose 
the best. Sometimes it's ours, sometimes it's not. When the fox walks, is it called a fox trot? That's a real question. Compare Progressive Direct rates with competitors' rates. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy.